Hi, I'm Mike Isaacson, the executive producer of The Muni. I am here on the PNC Gazebo, and I am talking to Norm Lewis. Hello. Who is playing Javert in Les Mis, that every, Les Mis Rob, everyone is so excited. So, but here's my first question. On the first day of rehearsal, everybody in the room, uh, you shared that you just had, you had just come from celebrating your birthday. Yes. So I would like to start with a question, because birthdays are fascinating mm. to me. Um, and looking back and looking forward, how do you feel about where you are in your journey? Well, I just turned 50 and I feel like it was a milestone. So that's why I wanted to kind of celebrate it uh, because both my parents have passed on and I've had a lot of friends and, and other family members who have passed on early ages, uh, some in their later ages as well. But I just, I feel, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to be this age, to be where I am in my life and um, I wanted to share it with some friends. That's why I went to Europe and spent a few days there. Um, and as far as my career, I, I, I feel like I'm in a good place. Uh, That's an understatement, yeah, but keep going. I'm in a <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, you know, I'm just so happy to be, uh, to be here, to be working at the Muni. I know this sounds like I'm, I'm kissing up, but I've heard so much about the Muni for so long and I've never been here, so I'm right. just excited to be here. Well, on behalf of our audiences were um, thrilled uh, when we announced this casting. I think I got more emails than any show this season. People were just thrilled by the opportunity to, to see you in person. So let's talk about your history with Les Miserables. Mm -hmm. And you are portraying Javert. Actually, let's just jump to who is your Javert? How do you see him? Wow, um, you can hear that in the background there, yeah. the rehearsing, it sounds great. Um, my Javert is, I just wanted to be so honest and truthful to who this guy is. I didn't want to come in there because the music is written so rigidly and so staccato and, and you could go in there and just kind of just rely on the music, but I wanted to really study the words, really try to figure out what this guy's journey was about and find the truth. I didn't, I didn't want people to like or dislike him, I just wanted him to be understood mm -hmm. um, and I, I, I broke down a lot of his scenes almost like a monologue um, to see who is he talking to when he comes in and says tell me quickly what's the story who saw what and why and where um, I wanted to really focus on what is happening in that scene uh, I know it goes by so quickly but it's it's yeah. my, my subtext um, he's a guy that that is just very much of a zealot you know for what he believes in it's interesting to me that he, you know, going from the Hugo and in the show, he is this person who can't find forgiveness. Mm -mm. And I've known people like that, and you know, maybe you have too. But I'm, I'm interested in your thoughts of why that is with him. Hmm. Well, knowing that he was born in jail, uh, knowing that he comes from probably a a background that he's not that proud of. He wants to better himself, and he wants people to think of him as being better. And by his religious and moral beliefs, I think that he he strikes that journey or goes on that journey to uh, to make that known. But also, he judges people based on that. And there was no sin is sin, no matter if you lied or if you killed someone. It's not a degree of sin. It is sin, and that's what you have to. That's what you're punished for, and that's what you're. Uh, being, that's how you're being treated. That's fascinating. I hadn't thought about that, the, the upbringing and, and, and what that is. Why do you think, I mean, your experience with the show, wh what is it to you that, uh, about Les Miserables that offers audience, it has such a hold, such power. I mean, unlike really anything yeah, else. Yeah. Any thoughts? I, 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 you know, this, it's about this, these people that are in the 18th, 1800s uh, in France, um, and you, you try to relate that to everyone that is around the world, but somehow they're touched, everybody's touched by this show. I guess people can relate to the spiritual aspect of it. That's mm -hmm. the only thing I can, I can go by. There's a spirituality, whether you believe in God or not, there's a spirituality that's on that stage and through that story that just translates. and, and you know, you have to yeah. absorb. There's like this, this flow of this desire 
for redemption mm -hmm. from every character. Yeah. And I think that that is the most human quality there. I mean, it just sort of, and you, it, and it's so fascinating when you watch the show because you think, well, why don't we talk about this right, more? Right, right, right. And then here it is in just this one classic musical. Well, I also think too that uh, there's, you know, you're on the verge of life and death. And when you get to, get to that point, you know, there's that thin line between love and hate. There's that, that, that people somehow, their, their heart melts when someone's on the verge of dying, whether you hate them or not. They're, your, your, your heart kind of bleeds for them. And uh, seeing at least the four or five deaths that are on that stage, yeah. there's something about it that makes you go, oh man, I, I, I've been through this or I've seen this or I can relate to it.